Welcome to Electron Line. Another way in which it was proved that the theory of general relativity was real and could be shown to be correct in various ways was the emission of gravity waves or gravitational waves as they called them. Now, they didn't detect at the time the actual gravitational waves that were predicted to exist, especially with very dense objects such as neutron stars. And so when neutron stars circle one another, essentially circling the barycenter between them, they would emit gravitational waves, and those gravitational waves would require energy, and that leakage of energy as those gravitational waves were created would take the energy away from the neutron stars and they would then essentially slow down as they slow down their orbits would then shrink they would get closer and closer together as it travels slower and slower so is there a way in which we can show that to be the case the answer was yes if at least one of them was a pulsar well one such system was discovered back in 1974 by Hulse and Taylor now, both of them, in that case, were pulsars, and they were called PSR 9, 1913 plus 16. And as they were going around one another, they were emitting energy in the terms of gravity, gravitational waves, and it caused their pulsation to slow down. Well, why did they slow down? Well, that's because as they were going around, their pulses would become slower and slower and slower, and as they measured the change over time, over several decades, they would then realize that the accumulation of the slowdown could actually measure in terms of seconds. Now, of course, it's a tiny fraction of a very small time period that slowly over time would accumulate. And so they were actually able to show that over time, the orbits about one another were, slow, were slowing down, and the resulting pulsation of the pulsars were slowing down as well. And so because of that, they actually proved that gravitational waves exist indirectly, not by actually observing the waves because they weren't able to detect those yet, that came later, but they were able to show that they had to be real, they had to be there because the energy in creating the gravitational waves was leaking off the system and the rotations of those particular pulsars were slowing down over time. They received the Nobel Prize for that in 1993 for that tremendous discovery. Again, why did that happen? Well, again, Einstein predicted that gravitational waves had to exist. If space was curved, an object moved very rapidly, very massive objects moved very rapidly through space, they should then cause a curvature of space to undulate like that. There would be then variations in the, in the curvature of space, and then those variations would then move out from that source at the speed of light. At least that was the prediction by Einstein, and certainly we're beginning to look as if that is actually correct. So this is again a direct result of the theory of the general relativity. And, and Einstein was by all means correct in predicting the gravitational waves, which eventually we were able to actually measure directly. And that we'll show you in another video. So again, it seems to be correct. Everything we're observing seems to apply, imply that the theory of general relativity is absolutely the correct way of describing the universe. Everything we're measuring seems to be a direct result of that theory. So how close are those two pulsars? So those two pulsars happen to be uh, probably in the order of an astronomical unit, two astronomical units away. It's kind of the size of a solar system. That's what you would expect. Except the difference on these is that they're neutron stars. Neutron stars are only about 12 miles across, or about 20 kilometers across. And because of that, the gravitational field around them is extremely strong and when you have two very strong gravitational fields circling one another you will be able to notice some gravitational waves and those gravitational waves can then be measured in terms of the slowdown of the, the, the rotation of these of these pulsars. Now if those were black holes going around one another and they had even more mass than neutron stars more density and higher gravitational uh, attraction and therefore stronger uh, stronger um, what we call bending of, of the space, you would then notice those gravitational waves even stronger. Turns out when two of those uh, black holes collided with one another, we were actually directly able to directly measure the gravitational waves. Here, we simply see the slowdown. We can't actually measure the gravitational waves. So they're circling each other with a certain set of mass? Well, again, 
not the center mass, but there would be what we call a barycenter in between. If they're roughly the same size, then they would basically s circle around what we would call the barycenter in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the two black holes collide with each other, does one gobble up the other? Um, I don't know if you can say if one gobbles up the other, I think they gobble up each other. <laughs> they become one, right? Two become one. Usually they're not the same size, they become one. I think you can say that one gobbles the other one, one is massively bigger than the other, then it's more that term. Right? If they're about the same size, one is 10 solar masses, and almost 20 solar masses, they don't gobble each other, they just kind of combine. Do they combine equally, become 30 solar masses? Yes, they do. There's no exponential? No, the, there seems to be conservation of mass, so when two black holes combine, the total mass will be the same as the individual mass of the two, very, very close together. Yeah. All right, so we'll have to do a video on that one as well. So all the goodies are still in there. <laughs> all the goodies, <laughs> yeah. All the, whatever they are, they're still in there, causing mass, causing curvature of space. All right.